If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again and welcome to episode number 67 of the Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. Today we've got a trip away from home to Huddersfield to, well, what I know it as, as the McAlpine Stadium. It's what it used to be called a few years ago. It's changed names a few year, a few times over the years with their various different sponsorship deals. I'm not really too sure what the uh, the stadium is called right now. It was the Gal Farm last I knew, but it may again have changed hands since then. But uh, we're playing away from home up at Huddersfield regardless of what the stadium is actually called. We've got Naki Wells up top, who of course is very, very fast. We have a couple of good players up top as well. James Wilson on loan from uh, from Manchester United and Bologna as well. He's on loan from West Brom. I'm having to play a bit of a rotation side here again because of the uh, the fixture congestion, etc. Plus, I had a couple of go a couple of guys that were away on uh, international duty as well. Although, actually, I think. By, uh, if my memory serves me right, that's actually the next game. But still, we're heavily involved in the attacking play to start off with. Panilla whips the ball in and Razor scores a fantastic volley there to give us a 1-0 lead after 19 minutes. Normally in that sort of situation, you see players just slash at it, just absolutely try and hit it as hard as they possibly can, which uh, in most scenarios is the best thing to do. In this one though, obviously he had to hit it quite hard to get it past a goalkeeper, but... If you look at the way he hits the ball, the third replay shows it better than any of the others. He's actually really well guided into that bottom corner. He could have just lashed at it and tried to smash it at the near post or just hit it as hard as he could on target. But he purposefully guided that into the bottom corner, which is actually a very, very good finish. So I was really pleased with that. And then Senorelli, Senorelli is actually going to break in and make it 2-0. Not really too sure how the goalkeeper's been beaten that easily at his near post. Perhaps he was expecting the shot across goal, but it didn't come. And uh, we've made it 2-0 as we headed into the second half gonna have ourselves another attack here as well Signorelli involved yet again Bologna in behind here just on side very very tight but he makes it past the, uh, the defensive line to make it 3-0 and I think that's actually his first goal for the club might be mistaken but I think it is his first goal in a Cambridge United shirt so we're pleased for him to be able to get that then they caught me on the counter-attack but you see there the man goes down under the challenge uh, Menzono my centre-back and he's actually gonna stay down there we actually nice bit of footwork from James Wilson actually to work the ball out to Panilla but as he turns inside the defender and um, we are actually going to have the play pulled back for the injury and I'm going to have to take Menzono off for, uh, for Salah Soliman, I believe, is the player on the bench that uh, I've got waiting there, the centre-back. So, uh, unfortunately, we're a player down, but we are three goals to the good. But that kind of unsettled us at the back. And uh, defensively, we weren't really as solid as we had been uh, so far in the game. As you can see, we get the one tackle in there, then get another tackle in or a good block. But then Penilla dilly's, uh, dilly dallies on the ball. Good cross. James Vaughan wins the header. Deflected off the bar. Goes through the goalkeeper's legs. And James Vaughan gets to the rebound. So that makes it 3-1 in the 88th minute. And uh, it was slightly nervy, perhaps, for the next two or three minutes. I was kind of concerned that Huddersfield might get themselves back in it. Uh, Danny Butterfield took the ball off me there, but we were able to win it back again. Senorelli with a gorgeous turn and then a top finish on the end of it as well. So we get our three-goal advantage back again to make it Cambridge 4, Huddersfield 1. And uh, again, this series goes from strength to strength. The new signings, all three goals come from new signings this year. Uh, all four goals, sorry, come from new signings this year. Three separate goal scorers. And uh, it has to be said, again, I know I continue to say it, and I wasn't expecting the Championship to be going as well as it is right now, but these new signings we've brought in have really helped the club out. And uh, obviously, it's good for the series in the long term because we want to go from strength to strength. There's no point doing a career mode road to glory and being stuck in League One and Two for four seasons, is there? We, you know, to get uh, this series going at a good pace, to get us to the Premier League and have a chance of not only getting into the Premier League, but then perhaps qualifying for Europe and having two years in the BPL. Uh, we obviously need to have an accelerated process to get up the league ladder. So it's nice that uh, things are going well for us so far. And we haven't had to use the financial takeover, etc., which I know a lot of people do resort to when using a lower league side. We've done it all off our own back so far, which I think is actually very commendable. So hopefully that can go from, uh, you know, with that can continue. We can go on from strength to strength as we have been so far. But O'Halloran standing the ball up in the box here. We played one northern side in the shape of Huddersfield. This time we've got a Lancashire side coming down to us uh, in the shape of Black. Good save, actually, by the goalkeeper there. Top save, down low. Do well to uh, shove a palm out to that. But uh, as you can see, Mahoney's going to get the ball into the box here. Good cross. Not really too sure where the defender is there. He's kind of in no man's land underneath it. Gets caught underneath it. And uh, really, to be fair, their man should have done better there. We're playing Will Atkinson in goal, the, uh, the 57-rated youngster. This is the game where I had the, um, the international, uh, you know, 
players players who were unavailable due to international business. But uh, O'Halloran's in behind here, and another top save by their goalkeeper Reem uh, or Reed. I can't quite remember what his name was. I think it was Reem. But uh, regardless of what his name is, he's making good saves. We stay at nil nil. Corner comes in. Josh Coulson goes up, but unfortunately, it's headed wide of the target, and the goalkeeper this time isn't tested. But uh, we're actually having a decent game. I felt it was quite open actually. It felt very open. There were chances at both ends. And Quezia Pai gets played through. He's just racing away. He's going to give me through one on one. And to be completely honest, there aren't really many more clear cut straight red card situations like that in the game. It's very, very easy for the referee to decide that Shane Duffy's pulled Quezzy down. It is a free kick. It is a red card. And unfortunately for him and for his team, Blackburn are now down to 10 men early on in the first half. Only about half an hour in, I believe, when uh, that challenge actually went in. Quezzy was going to finish that. I had no doubts about that whatsoever. And uh, as you can see, yeah, it was 29 minutes in. So for the rest of the game, Black, uh, Blackburn, sorry, I almost called him Blackpool. Blackburn were well up against it. Try and get a goal from the resulting free kick and the deflection could have gone anywhere. But I'm uh, Unfortunately for me, it went over the bar and well wide. But the game was very open prior to that. And then afterwards, uh, I don't know, Blackburn, Blackburn... I almost called it Blackpool again. Jeez. Blackburn... Uh, did solidify defensively, but they kept, when they have set pieces like that, committing too many men forward. Quezzy just tore the defender an absolute new arsehole. There was an incredible run. Just going from side to side, the defender didn't know which way to turn, eventually committed to a challenge, and Quezzy just danced around him. You see, there, dances around the challenge, and then, similar to how the, uh, the chance was going when he was uh, pulled back and they got the man sent off, Always fully confident of Quezzy to finish a chance like that, and he did so. Uh, again, though, the goalkeeper comes out here. We get an advantage, which is strange. It looks like the advantage was in our favour as well, because I had the shot and it wasn't pulled back for a Blackburn free kick. So I'm uh, not really too sure why we got the advantage when it would have been a penalty, but uh, unfortunately, Greg Taylor wasn't able to put the ball into the back of the net. And Tom Elliott, in situations like this, scores nine times out of ten in League One and League Two. But in the Championship, he's just not quite good enough again. It's keen at the goalkeeper, not... Uh, Ream. I don't know why I was saying Ream. But uh, yeah, Blackburn are uh, going to give the ball away here. Again, committing too many bodies forward, though we are in stoppage time. Bologna through one on one. Chance to get his second goal for the club. And he hits the outside the post. No excuses there. That is just absolutely woeful finishing. And it has to be said that Fabian Casada or Quezzi Appiah would have put that into the back of the net. I think even Tom Elliott might have even buried that one this season. But we do get the 1-0 win thanks to Quezzi's goal in the 41st minute. A very tight game considering that it was uh, they were one man down for the majority of it. But we come into the third and final game of the season, of the season, of the episode. And so we're away from home against Walsall. Now, obviously, if you watch my Football Manager content, you'll be familiar with uh, the majority of this starting lineup. Although uh, a couple of players uh, have moved on, but uh, players that we had at Walsall uh, include O'Donnell, James O'Connor, Ma uh, Marvin Benning, Sam Manton, Billy Clifford, Jordan Cook, and Tom Bradshaw up top. But we all obviously have Paul Downing at centre back, who uh, we got from Walsall in this series, and was my best player or my best defender at Walsall on Football Manager as well. So uh, it, we. For some reason, we seem to have some sort of unofficial affiliation with uh, Walsall right now in all different sorts of uh, video games. But right now, we want to uh, to beat them rather than uh, trying to win with them like we have been on Football Manager recently. But so we get caught on the ball there by uh, Tom Bradshaw. He gets crunched, absolutely nailed, but we play on. Uh, I missed the first challenge. Sam Manson was going to lay it across to Jordan Cook. And uh, I thought I'd narrowed the angle just by getting the man in front of him and uh, sticking out a foot. But somehow he's able to squeeze it in that near post. It was quite disappointing disappointed with a bogo there that uh, my goalkeeper wasn't able to keep it out but we do go 1-0 down then just a couple of minutes later Jordan Cook is terrorising me down the right hand side again cuts inside really nicely keep expecting him to go down the line and then eventually does but I uh, tried to read it too much James Cracknell James Cracknell no he was the rower wasn't he uh, <laughs> Cracknell squares it across to Sam Mantum and uh, they make it 2-0 just before the half time and uh, they get two goals in the space of two minutes, unfortunately. Then we try to build something in the second half, but we give the ball away cheaply. Billy Clifford finds Sam Mantle. He's going to find a through ball to, uh, to Tom Bradshaw, and this is a top finish. He never did that for me on, uh, on Football Manager. Tom Bradshaw was nowhere near my first team, but had he been scoring goals like that, in, uh, in Football Manager. He definitely would have been near my first team. But they again were on the attack here. We're going to try and catch them on the counter though. We have actually managed to get it off them for once in a defensive area. Paul Downing, uh, rather ironically, 
brother, ironically, was the man to actually get it off them. And uh, Caseda nicks off the defender here. Pretty poor pass from uh, Quezzi, to be fair, but great finish from Caseda. Back in the starting lineup after injury and back on the score seat. 3 1 with 15 minutes to go. Question was, could we build on that? Huddersfield weren't able to in the first game, and we went and scored a fourth, but were we going to be able to make it 3 2, or were Wolves going to make it 4 1? Caseda and Appiah link up well there. I think Quezzi's going to go on another top run. He did it against Blackburn in the previous game. Goes on a great run here again and a top finish. So they scored two goals in two minutes in the first half. We've scored two goals in five minutes in the second half to make it 3-2 with 10 minutes to go. The question was, are we going to do the unthinkable and make it 3-3? No. No, we're not. It's going to be 3-2 to Walsall. Unfortunately, we lose away from home against Walsall. So that's three defeats now this season. Once against QPR, once against Norwich and once against Walsall. But we do still sit top of the table by three points and... Incidentally, the two two of the three sides that have beaten us so far this season sit in second and third. So uh, at least we're not losing to people that are terrible. Although to be fair, Walsall aren't in the top 18, or at least I can't by scanning the uh, the, the table there see their names. So uh, we're top of the table still, though three points clear. Although three points clear of both QPR and Norwich. So if they both win and we lose again, and they do uh, do us some goal difference, which probably isn't that likely considering we're plus four and plus seven ahead of QPR and Norwich respectively. But still, if we lose again and continue to uh, look, draw points uh, then uh, both of them are poised to overtake us and knock us back down into the playoffs so we're gonna have to keep up our good form be nice to get uh, all of those players back from international duty like we have done now with uh, Fabian Caseda back in the starting lineup as well back from injury so hopefully we can solidify defensively uh, I know I'm terrible at defending on this particular career mode I'm just not very good at it with the uh, the lesser skilled players and it has been widely pointed out in the in the comment section and I am fully aware of it don't worry I know I'm not that good when it comes to a defense on FIFA. I've never claimed to be amazing anyway, so it's not as if I'm <laughs> putting in uh, false claims to be an amazing FIFA player. I know I'm average, and uh, hopefully my averageness will be enough to help us get promotion into the Premier League with Cambridge United, but we'll have to wait and see. But that's going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I will be streaming FIFA later on tonight, so check the uh, links in the Twitch links to the Twitch channel in the description down below and of course follow me on Twitter as well if you don't already over 4,000 followers over there now which is fantastic closing in on four and a half in fact so uh, do come over and follow me on Twitter if you don't already but that will be all for now thank you very much for watching we'll have my player again tomorrow and another episode of the career mode road to glory